So this is just a class introduction session today. So and also always our session should be interactive. So always you will be available. You can unmute and ask your question and go back to your mute. So don't hesitate to ask any questions with me. So it should be a freedom list. We have 27th batch we plan to discuss today. Oh my God. 27. Hmm. Okay, so this is just a class introductions. So today what we are planning to discuss, what are the questions you have? You maybe have some doubts, right? Everything we are planning to discuss today. That is the agenda. So as well as we will be going to discuss the topics as well as the syllabus, what we promised that we are going to discuss in detail because you need some clarity. Then only you can get some ideas what's going to be happening. So I will go step by step. First, I'm going to discuss about the topics. So a few of them very clearly noticed where the syllabus is available. Just go to the nomination form. This is already a share, this nomination form. Here you can see the syllabus detail is available. Just to click on the syllabus information and open it, you can see what's going to be covered, the entire batch. That's all the information I just crossed here. So you can see the course overview, full stack developer, everything is going to be discussed from here to, from topic one to topic 10. All the topics is going to be covered. This is just a basic overview information, what's going to be covered inside. Each of the topic, what are the content and the practically as well as the theory, everything we are going to mention in separate step by step by step. And here that cloud data engineers, sorry, normal data engineer, they are going to learn from topic one to topic seven, which means harder, Hive, Spark, especially we are planning to discuss entirely with the Python and PySpark related one. We'll not be go with the other programming language. So some other programming language also available like Scala or Java is available, but we plan to go with one single programming. Otherwise, what will happen? You are going for the interview. You may be confused with the syntax. As well as the future, we are thinking about it. Python is the best part to compare with other programming languages. If you're going to enter into the data science from data engineering, because both of them is correlated. At the time, you don't want to learn it again as a new program. Instead of that, the existing program, you can adapt with that. That is also one of the major reasons we plan to discuss everything with the Python. Also, the Python will be covered from the scratch. So enter in the basics, Python will be covered before starting the programming session. This is the added sessions will, be, will not be mentioned yet, but this is also one of the topics. And cloud, AWS, AWS, and all the cloud services, we are going to discuss only with data engineering services only. It will not be go from the basics because it's a waste of our time. Only data engineering services is what all is available. That all we plan to discuss here. So like data is AWS S3, easy to instance, Lambda integrations, Kinesis, uh, Glue, Athena, EMR cluster, DynamoDB, RDS. These are the combinations for AWS services. So these services mostly we are going to discuss and basic IAM policy because the basic IAM policy it may help for your combinations of snowflake integrations. There also the knowledge is adapted so that we will be planning to discuss there itself. Any questions? Yeah, hi, this is Sadish. Uh, I have a question. Can you please yeah, go back to the previous slide? This one, no? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. So. Uh, Will the course be covered in the same order that you shown on that screen? One, uh, two, three, yeah, four. close to that. Close to that. This is the same order. First, we plan to start from the Hadoop and the basic Linux commands will be covered here itself and the comparison with Hadoop commands. Both will be as well as the theory and practical everything we will be going to discuss. Once it is over, then we'll be going to start with the Hive. So as well as Hive, the basic SQL comparison, or RDBMS comparison, we are going to do that. As well as we will go in depth in that. Then Python, once Python is covered, then only PySpark is going to be start. Because basic okay, programming the knowledge PySpark, you need. PySpark mm. SQL will be covered as part of PySpark. Yes, yes, yes. All the topics is available. You just go through the syllabus, right? Here, what is I'm going to cover in Spark? Okay, you can see this one. 
So Spark RDD, as well as the data frame, data frame reader, writer, and Spark uh, transformations, RDD transformation, data frame transformation, and multiple source integration like JDBC, Pocket, OS, if I have to, you're going to read Avro, RDBMS, Hive table, and other JSON formats as well is available. These are also batch project related, but we'll be going to cover it. Once batch topic is covered, we'll be going to see some sample projects, and then we'll be switching to Avro, sorry, uh, Kafka. Kafka streaming will be covered. How streaming is working with the Kafka. Once you learn about the Kafka, we'll be come back to streaming topics with the Apache Spark. The combination must be required because if I'm going to take the sessions only with the Apache Spark streaming, you may be confused how it is working. So we have to give some inputs about the basics of Kafka streaming activities, and then we'll be going to cover with streaming topics as well as the streaming projects. So this is the uh, pipeline we'll be designed. And uh, the pipeline flow for the each topics has to be covered based on this pipeline only. So PySpark RDD data frame is going to be covered. Spark up to Spark SQL, and then batch project we are going to discuss. Once the batch project is over, we will be going to start with Kafka streaming concept. Kafka over, come back again. Start Spark streaming and structure streaming concept we will be going to discuss. Everything is done, and then we will be going to start with Airflow or Docker. Mostly Docker we plan to suggest it. Once you know the Docker, the Cassandra, right? That's we are going to use as a separate Docker images and how we are going to adopt and play some operation with the Cassandra images like that. This is the way we are going to approach because the learning with the Docker basic commands and all, you must adopt and practice something with your own skill. So we are going to you add these images once you learn with the Docker and then you're going to uh, use it. But all other environment, right? like Hadoop, Hive, PySpark, that all we will give you as additional environment using Docker platforms. So it's up to expanded to 2.2 to, to Finode cluster based on your system configurations. At least we must require four core and eight GP RAM. It's at least based. If you have more than that, based on that, your, that our configuration, right? This is going to be React and it's going to be created with the Finode up to. Each node I'm going to design with the 2 to 4 GB or 3 GB based on your size of configuration we will be designed and will give you. This is going to be React as a multi-node practice. So nobody is going to be do like that. Everybody will go with a standalone practice, but here we will be going to give you as a multi-node practice because this is only will close to reality. While you are going to submit the job and you are going to deploy it, anything, how the resource is going to be suggested, how the resource is going to be applied to your particular job. That all the information we can get from here as well. Also, practice environment, we have separate node is available for Jupyter Lab. Here you can do and play all your commands under. Example, if I'm going to work with Hive, just Hive kernel is available, just open it and practice with your commands. Show database or something. Okay, so what it will happen is just store this information and you can save this notebook and you can use it for future references as well. So this is the way this is, uh, we will be create the setup environment. If you want to work with the practice in terminal, you can use it like Hive terminal. Just to click on it and give your commands like Hive or Beeline. You can use any one of them as your wish and type all your commands. So here or there, everything will be synced together. If I'm going to create a database here, This D27. You can see that information, it's immediately synced with your notebook. We will be calling the backend with some REST API to fetch some data from here. So immediately it will be responded. If I'm going to create any tables, see a table test ID in something I'm going to create right now. D27. Okay, show tables from the 27, you can see the table information. Let me go and insert some data. Sorry, the 27. Okay, this information is going to be Adopt with your resources. How much resources are allocated for this particular job? So out of 25 GB, this job will be requested for 1.5 GB and course will be allocated out of 10 course, one course has to be assigned. 
So this much information you can get from here. Once the job is complete, the resources has to be released in some time. Also, you can see the job is complete here. As it is, you can go and practice and select start from command. Okay, like that, you can create your own notebook. Here is some references for DE26. All the job, all the topics we will be going to cover, right? Everything will give you as a future references. Just you want to open it and note in your in a practice environment. Each topic, what we cover, all the information will give you as a notebook. Immediately, you can use it. If you go for the interview in the future, you don't want to start from the beginning, just to open this notebook and note what is going on, what we learn it. All the information step by step with the output is available. You just go through with that. That's it. Okay, like that you can practice it. Are you sure clear now? Any question? Is there any question? Okay, fine. So next, what we have discussed, the syllabus topics, right? So how you in detail information, how do the basics we'll be going to discuss with, how do 2x and 3x comparison, and each of the commands with how do we are going to discuss that. Okay, these are all the hard basics. After that, we will be going to discuss with resource manager and some theory part. Mostly in hard we will be discussing theory part. After that, we will be going to work with some commands as well. Hard commands, how hard is working, and the sample example with map produce jobs. We will be going to deploy some map produce jobs and how it is reacted. That information we are going to discuss. And then we will be going to start with hive architecture based from the basic. How the hive is working from the execution flow, we'll be going to discuss and how it is going to be convert that uh, hive query to map produce job, the back end, what's going to be happen. So, one or two sessions maximum is going to be theory. After that, we'll be going to see each topic in practical manner. So, hive server, hive server, thrift to server, the differences, how BLN is working, how hive scale is working, and creating the table with the multiple uh, so, uh, live file formats. Like I have a file format, pocket, OAC, JSON, structured, uh, rendered, complex data type is available. All this you know, uh, file format, we are going to play it and work with that particular file itself. And we will give you some sample files to you for your practice as well. And partitioning, bucketing, how the partitioning is working, what is the use of partitioning and the types of the partitioning and the bucketing concept inside the joints and the performance training related to the topics. This is all we are going to discuss. After discussion is over, we are going to see some examples with Hive projects, how real-time project is going to be run in the back end. That idea as well as the knowledge will help you while you are going to do your deployment in real time. So that's the reason we'll be planning. First, we'll be cover the topics and then we'll be going to see some projects as well. Okay, any question? Are we not covering the scope? Yeah, Manoj. Let it louder. Are we not covering the scope here? A scoop is a retired project. So don't waste your time to learn it. But already previous recording is available, right? We will share you that as a material, right? That you can learn it. Scope is but it's a retired project. We will not be suggested. Existing we have included, right? That recording is available. So this is the material access we will give you. Here, all the information is available. What we are going to discuss, right? All the topics, each of the topics separately will be designed. And inside the queries, notebooks, class notes, paints, everything we'll give you. So like that, the topics, each of the topics, once it's covered, is going to be stored in the backend and it will give you the access to you. As well as the environment access. This is actual project. This is only available for you and your team. There's a common drive access. Here, the VM, the particular VM, with the Docker related, we are planning to discuss, uh, create everything as a Docker container basis. Almost 18 containers running in the backend as a multi node practice. We will give you this one. Otherwise, if you are going and comfort with standalone, that is also we will give you standalone VM also is available. It's up to your wish. We will give you that. Instead, if you go the data set, 
some sample data set being provided as well as other recordings. If you go inside this other recording, some of the basics is available like scoop recording and some other recording to embed to store it. Only the retired projects, which is not usable, that's we plan to store into other recordings and only for data engineering related. Okay, some sample resumes as well as the libraries. Some of the ebooks will be stored so you can refer it for your future references as well. So like that, we just divide and store this information and you can use it. This is the material access. So recordings, each class is what we are discussing, right? That the entire recording we are going to share with you. Class notes, like this notebook will be designed. This notebook and some additional text file we are going to use it. That text file and some prints or some uh, images we are going to fetch from the net. That information also will be going to store for your future references. You can use it while you go for the interview or you're doing some uh, recall operations. You okay? Yeah, hi, this is Hadish. I have a question. Like, yeah, uh, is there any website where we can post our queries or questions and uh, how we can reach out to you, like the team who can help us when we're stuck somewhere? Actually, here we will be splitting inside the batch, right? We will be splitting to two to three groups. Okay, so let's example this batch you are going to join with the 15 members or 20 members. Based on the count, we will be going to segregate two to three teams and we will be going to monitor each team what they are doing with some assignments, some other works activities as well. While you have a questions now, you can raise into the private WhatsApp group. Anybody will respond. If nobody is respond within a 24 hours, I will respond back to your questions. Don't worry. I mean, where, where we can respond to that? Like, I just don't know WhatsApp group or any. You yeah, have any private website? WhatsApp group will be created for each batch. There you can raise all your questions. There we will be going to discuss that in detail. Yeah. Okay. Also, if you need yeah. one to one, we will help you to connect in one to one to solve all your issues. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Because this collaboration will help you for future references as well. Okay. Yeah, got it. Almost we have 26 batches available. If any reference, we will be get from there. Because before they are just a student, now they are expert. So they have some openings they will share to us and we will send spread into across all our batch members. So this kind of collaboration is going to happen. That's definitely will help you for your future uh, practice as well. If you want to look for any job change, they may help you mostly. And your team, I'm going to create right that private batch group and creating multiple uh, teams. They are while you are going to sync the, with them, they will give you some inputs. This kind of activity definitely will grow up your skills as well as your network. So that's our plan. Okay. Any question? Hello. Hello. So what would be the duration of this course? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, just a minute, hear a little noisy. Yeah, can you please raise your questions again? So, uh, what would be the duration of this course? So, how long it will take? To uh, it's minimum three to five months. Depends on your course selections, right? So, if you're going to select data engineering, that will reach you almost. Uh, sorry. So, here, this is a data engineering related. If you're going to choose this one, this is minimum two, two and a half months to three months it will go. After that, each other topic we have to cover. So minimum, if you're going to choose full stack, it will be a five months. Okay, we cannot go less than that because training assignments and the practical sessions, everything we are going to discuss and a lot of uh, uh, the team collaboration assignments we plan it right. That definitely will take up to five months. I'm sure that it will not reduce and it's not a fast track. This is for slow track. 
in your batch you may be expert and somebody will be in some basic experience only they have somebody will not touch with any programming before so everybody will be coming to the equal wavelength then only we can speed up our classes as well so it will take some time as well as it's a slow time if you have any question you cannot ask the simple question we will open the private chat window for you you can raise your question in separate don't hesitate to raise any questions whatever the question if even it's a small or big we don't think about it just raise your question in separate chat window we will look on this questions and will answer without mentioning your name as well you need a freedom as well as your learning so because somebody will be come as an expert they know everything but you as a fresher or non tech developer you may be enter into this batch right you don't have clear information about it so we will give you our best with you even for a small information that is a big for them otherwise so we will think both of your clients okay even a single create table command also somebody will not clear with the syntax that is also we will give you as a guidance so this is the way yeah i have a question like uh mm. if we choose the sec i mean third one aws data engineer so mm. how long it would be oh, uh, covered three and of two four and of my four months because after basics is over right then only we are going to discuss with aws related topics and this is mostly how the service is working like i said right each services we are going to create as a separate one and we are going to play with that particular service example s3 bucket is available we are going to create this s3 bucket and we are trying to read some data from there and write some data something we are going to do via programmatic so using python program we are going to do that operations like with ec instance lambda operation genesis genesis is a kind of kafka streaming operations so uh, everything we are going to work with some programming basis so how we are we'll going to call by api hmm? will redshift cover as part of aws redshift will not be covered here instead of that only we plan to go we enter a little snowflake topics because snowflake is a kind of data warehouse right so we will not be adopted to data warehouses and nowadays is speak with the snowflake only Redshift. If you know AWS knowledge, if you easily you can adopt with the Redshift. That's not a big deal. But we don't want to go with the two data warehouses. Instead of that, we plan to cover entirely with Snowflake. Snowflake is a trending technology. Uh, who are is the data engineering with the data model related, data warehouse related? They will be work with the Snowflake. So we will be going to cover entirely with the Snowflake operation with the Snowpipe. How automation is working. Whenever the data is going to be re right into AWS environment, how we immediately switch into Snowflake practice. So these are we will be going to discuss here: streams, internal stages, external stages, materialized views, a Snowpipe using AWS Cloud or Azure Cloud, and time travel. These are we will be going to combine together and we'll discuss that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, you uh, like? Uh, can you go to the AWS slide? You mentioned their sample project, right? Hmm. So is it completely on AWS or? Yeah, we will be going to create oh. a service, right? It's going to be created in EMR cluster, and we are going to deploy something, and how it's going to be interacted. As well as we will be going to create S3 bucket, the combinations from the S3 bucket, where how the data is going to be adopted with your EMR cluster and deployed there. As well as you have uh, what is that? Snowflake and Roman. The combination is going to be combined. By a Snowpipe, when all the data is going to be injected into the S3 bucket. How it's going to be travel to your environment? Okay. Snowflake tables, something like as well as the some streaming projects with the Kinesis. They are going to write some data. How Kinesis is going to be read and how it's going to be stored into S3 platform. Okay, our Lambda practice we are going to design the backend. How Lambda is working? That all we are going to discuss in detail here. Okay, we use PySpark to write Lambda functions in jobs. jobs. Yeah, it's so a Python. We are going to create Lambda function and deploy there. How it's going to be communicated with it, all your other services? Our Glue ETL is available. So here, Glue context creations. How it will be different from Spark context? What is the difference on when to use Glue context? Something we are going to discuss. And automation schedule operation with the Glue. These all we are going to discuss in detail. Okay, will you cover QuickSight as part of this? Amazon QuickSight. QuickSight is a visual, right? So as a data engineer, it's not required. Athena, you may require. 
because in Athena, you may have to query some data. So that we will be planning to discuss with Athena. QuickSight is a kind, just a visual basis. So we'll be focused only with the data engineering related, right? This all you are going to work as a data engineer. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah I got that. Uh, actually, I have a question like, uh... I just started working on Athena, but it is not recognizing some functions like trunk add months. You have so to create Athena some... Use some other language or what? SQL language? No, Athena, you may be creating the back end. You have to design some connectors, right? So that connectors also matter. Controls, uh, crawlers, connectors is available. That you might want to design it properly, then only just sync with that. Uh, I, well, actually, uh, it's working in a normal database. Like if I want to add months to any date, it's mm. working in database. But if I run the same query in Athena, it's giving uh, error like uh, add fun uh, add months function is not recognized kind of error. Even trunk is also not working. Athena is a kind of a wrapper of SQL. Okay. So it will not support all the functions. You maybe have to add it. We will discuss separately with uh, while we are going to with the AWS, right? There, I will show you all the information. Because in the okay. back end, Athena is going to be communicated with your, uh, all your network connectors and crawlers and the, there you can deploy your own functions as well. So that okay. we will discuss, don't worry. Yep. This is just a basics one that you don't cover, you don't think about it. Athena is not much in fact, it's how you're going to read based on your SQL wrapper, that's it. We will help you in that, don't worry. Okay, will you just explain how these services work or uh, like, uh, will you cover in depth? Each like, service uh, we are planning to create. In real world? Exactly, we are going to create each service. We are going to discuss that properties as well as how this service is going to be react with your real time platform. And we will be going to access that service via programmatically. We are going to create some Python API, right? Via Python API is going to be read the services, do some analysis, and finally we are going to terminate the service. Create, use, and delete. All these three we are going to discuss in detail. Read services. Got it? Oh, okay, okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I just wanted to know that uh, after doing, I, for example, I am as a fresher. So after doing this course, can I put as a, you know, experience of uh, two years or three years in my resume? Uh, separately, we will give you some guidance, interview topics, right? We will not be uh, informing you to go after the session. In a middle session, once the particular topic is over, we will inform you to go for some interview, as well as we will give you some interview tips in the middle session. Around two months, once it's over, after that, we will inform you, you will maybe go for some interview. That you and may not be clear some interview questions, right? Some okay. small scale companies you may be going to attend, you cannot answer the question. Just bring it to us. We will be discuss in our session itself. Because no, the sorry, same question will help to others. Yeah. Sorry to add this that I'm fresh in big data, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm having IT experience by the way. Mm -hmm. And second thing is that whatever project you are going to be do, uh, do in this course is on, I mean, from beginner to moderate level or from uh, beginner to expertise level actually because mm -hmm. what happened the, if the interviewer will take the uh, resume and mm -hmm. uh, by checking the resume in the project and project description he or she might easily come to know whether he has done just small POC or just copy pasted from internet or he has really done the project. Exactly I understand your problem this is the same is going to happen to somebody as well or as a fresher. What we are trying to do we will be going to give you some scratch level. That is the reason we will be cover the Python fundamentals. Basic Python strike, these are all the things is available, how it's working, that information we are going to feed it. Once you know the confidence, then only you can easily adopt with your practices, right? Because without hmm. programming, you cannot understand what's going on. You don't have confidence to write the code. Because you, are, hmm. you maybe go for the interview, you have to write the code and syntax and that. So hmm. first we will give you some confidence, then only we are going to start with the programming related topics. There we will go in detail. While we will give we will give you some assignments, right? You are going to work together with your team. Somebody will be experienced. Somebody is a fresher like you. Everybody is sync together, and they have to complete the particular assignment. That you will be doing some practice, right? That definitely will help you to grow up your skill with the stuff. Am I right? So everything you have ready. Then before go for the interview, we will screening your resume. We will give you one-to-one -one discussion. 
how you have to rename uh, you mod sorry remodify the resume how you want to crack the interview and all some tips and tricks we will give you then only you go for the interview so before that we will give you some base confidence and sometimes you cannot clear first round because you, as a fresher you may be as a, you will not be get confident to clear the first round they may be asked different kind of questions just bring the questions everything to us we will be discuss and will give you what is the answer they are expected and we will give you some advices as well as some assignments while you are work with that you will be get confidence again then you will go for the interview within one or two interview or three interview you may be clear and get the job this is the plan we are not helping you all the places we are going to give you as a staff the programming skill as well as the data engineering skill we are going to feeding you definitely if you are going to do the continuous practice you can do it your own i'm sure that's i promise and, yeah okay and now the second thing is let's say if i am doing some project uh, mm. uh, i mean some office project mm. okay so there i got some issue so mm. will you be helping in that case as well yeah. after the completion of courses exactly all the time your batch whatsapp group is open for you you can raise all your questions there people will help you because they are also going to work right they are going to take your scenario and they will be going to practice if nobody but is answer cases, i will definitely answer to your question don't worry but this uh, what happens some cases it's very tough to you know uh, put the things into the words hmm. so you it, can reach it, me in private we will help you one to one we will uh, connect and will give you some so you will be helping in that case as well yeah right? yeah i'm we not it, it, it like... is very obvious that i will be not asking for the spoon feeding but yes i mean some guidance or what kind of steps we can take to resolve this issue you can give, give me that help right exactly we will definitely help you some data modeling designing also we will give you some advice from our team don't worry about it mostly what we have faced it as experience in this whatsapp group they may be facing some issues while deploying the code and all right they may be getting different kind of error so mm -hmm. such kind of issues they may be raised into the whatsapp group still we will be started from 2018 our batches and still it's going on still whatsapp group is in life people are sing together and discuss their all their queries and they will be providing some guidance to others as well so this collaborations and network communication is going to help you for future references few will be moved into next level and they will be helping for others as well so that is uh, we are uh, our thought the quality as well as that community the network community we will be keep on maintain it so definitely and, we will help in that way and what will be the laptop configuration to attend this course Oh, minimum, minimum we need eight GB and four core. Maximum it's up to you. If you have okay. more than that, that would be really better because you don't have any. Uh, how can I say any issues with your operating system? It will not be raised it, right? Mm -hmm. So we will suggest you based on that. If you are going to use mini, uh, so basic only, we can give you with the two node clusters. If you have big cluster sizes like uh, you have more RAM, more cores available, we will going to expand with the five node. Mm -hmm. So here you can see this one five double zero seven one. How do we write? Yeah, seven zero seven zero. Okay. So here each data node will be designed it right. So how it is responded in the back end while you mm -hmm. write the data, how it is reacted, replication factor, how it is working, everything you want to discuss and work it more right. So mm -hmm. this will help you definitely. That's the reason. Minimum, I'm saying, that's the basics. If you have to capable to upgrade your system or you can enhance your machine, that would be great to learn more without any problem. Okay, it's up to you. But we will be request minimum based on that. Okay, fine, fine. Mm. Okay, thanks, sir. Mm, yeah. Any other question? No. Yes, sir. I have. Uh, I have a question. Like, oh, can you please uh, go back to the page or which you just saw? This one. I don't know, not this one. Like, uh, you just uh, open the uh, cluster nodes and all. This one, huh? Yeah. What is this exactly meant for? How much resources are available for your single machine? So this is actually final cluster I have designed. Each node, how much memory is available? Total twenty five GB of memory. I just allocated and ten cores I assigned. This is my system configuration based. I can assign it. Like that, you have sixteen GB RAM. And eight core uh, mm -hmm. processor, then it will be around with your memory capital list. We will give you what kind of memory images you have to use. This is the backend is running with the container. Everything has a deployed as a Docker container. 
but why can't we do the same thing on uh, aws cluster if let's That's say if i have my right? yeah <laughs> and that is chargeable that is okay but still if the laptop configuration is not there right and if i want to make i mean six node cluster or something like that so can we do that thing as well we will be teaching that as well you can, yeah that's a yama cluster practice we are going to do that right that we will give you that input as well to you but the problem is well you are going to use that for next one hour or two hour the charges is you have to pay for that right here you can run your system for 24 hours as you wish but because you are is, going to do some practice you as well but i think they will be giving some free hours as well in starting as a new account right no, i mean that is not they will not give you free time few of the okay. services only they will give you as a free not all the services okay because if for example if you are going to create ema cluster they will going to definitely charging you i'm sure so example, within a one hour, two hour, you cannot con understand that particular topic, right? You have to do some more practice. So let's example, I want to deploy my job with PySpark. So executive memory and driver memory, everything I have to do design and based on that, I have to deploy. Mm -hmm. Exit without quotation. Okay, now I'm going to start my PySpark, executive memory, two GP. Num executor as a thing. This is I'm planning to start. Executor, sir. <clears throat> okay, so this is my cluster size. I have designed to start my Spark operation and work with that. I have separate kernel also available. If you want, you can use separate kernel. So this is I'm going to do some practice, right? If I want to see this information, there is a selection I can see here. As well as whatever I'm trying to do, some play uh, practice, all the information you can notice here. The same if you're going to work with the cloud later, you have must to pay for that. You can use this for next 24 hours or 48 hours. Lifetime practice you can do with your physical system. It will not charging you. But how long you're going to deploy and wait in cloud, you must pay for that, right? Right, right, right. So that is completely we will be aware. So practice purpose, you don't want to pay much into your cloud uh, cloud environment. Learning purpose, you can use it. Just a basic and, learning. And All the say, commands you... Mm. Let's say, I mean, uh, you, you will be teaching in Python, right? PySpark. Mm. Mm. Now the thing is that um, in a real-time project, uh, the in Python is having a lot of uh, files like that, property files, config file, and all these things, schema, mm. schema mm. file, different, different files are there. Uh, in object-oriented programming. So you, you will be teaching in that way or all the code will Everything be in the same page? Everything we're going to see with the Python project, don't worry. We'll be creating the Python, the Python project. projects. We'll be going to discuss that with the object model. As mm -hmm. well as the Python basics, we are going to cover with the classes, objects, and all. So in it is how it is working, object, how it is working, method, UDF creation, Lambda creation, string slicer, iterations, control statement, functions, built-in function, UDF, and Lambda. This all will cover here, right? Everything we'll be going to discuss. Once it is over, then only we'll be entered into PySpark. Because concept you can understand. While you are going to do the syntax, the coding and all, you don't have confidence much in that. So there's are two ways we are going to do that. One is based on the Jupyter Notebook. Another one is based on the IDE. Both practice we are going to give you. How you are going to use IDE, because in real time, you may be going to work with IDE as well as this Jupyter Lab. So both, both the knowledge you must require. So both will give you as an input. And yeah, deploying the, new modules with Python yeah. model, everything you're going to do is because that it's no, no, the, but, but my point is in Jupyter Lab, all the things will be on one page. Mm. But uh, but I want it to be like a project kind of things. For example, there should be a, some different property files. Mm. There, there is some different config file. There is some different files for the Spark context. There is a different file for uh, schema of the data frame. All these things should not be in a one page, in a one okay. file, right? right? Exactly. I, same only we are going to design. We will be creating Spark sessions, separate module, as well as the configuration files we will be created as a separate, as well as mm. you advice, right? Uh, mm. some UDF references. Everything mm. we'll be going, going to create as a separate separate pipe file and we are mm. going to call via some main module. Right, right, to, right, right. Yeah, this is right. going to be definitely happen. So config file, we'll be going to import that while we are when we're going to some operation as well as we'll be going to cover with unit testing. Not only the development, unit testing also will be going to give you some additional input. 
as a developer, you must work with some UAT testing as well. That is also we will give you some basic inputs. Okay. How so you unit 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 testing. Testing. and what about debugging? Debugging. Yeah, debugging also in the backend is going to be run it right. So while deploying your cluster, Spark environment, or some other programming, how you have to debug the jobs, how the and exception what, is working, that all we are going to discuss in detail. Okay. And uh, what about the this one, the performance tuning of the Spark job and all? Yeah, that is also we'll be going to discuss at the end of our Spark session, right? We are going to see with the practical, not in theory part. What are all the topics available? We are trying to cut out with practical manner. So how the reality is going to be happening. Everything we are going to see with practical. Okay. So and which is pass system, in... pass, huh? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you, are telling, you are telling something about no, Spark tuning? No, Spark tuning related. How resource allocation here, the number of executors, how you have choose it. While well, you are going to provide how much resources allocated, how executor is designed, how driver is working, as well as some partitioning concept. So in high, sorry, that's a high part, right? As well as mm -hmm. high performance tuning and spark performance tuning combinations, we are going yeah, to discuss. Yeah. And the color sweep partition, how it is working, memory management, how it is reacted. These all we are going to discuss in detail with the practical, not in theory. Mm -hmm. And let's say there are two very huge databases, millions of records are there in two of the tables. How to join that as well, right? Mm. Yeah, or that's latency. a basic. We are first, we are going to run the job without any performance related. Absolutely. What is the outcome yeah. we are getting mm -hmm. it? After mm -hmm. that, while you are doing a, some performance tuning, what's happening mm -hmm. in the back end, how the job execution is modified. We are going to see entirely with the Spark references. Don't worry, mm -hmm. in practical. Okay, got it, got it. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm promised, I definitely show you all this information. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Any other question? Oh, yes, sir. I have one more question. Hmm. Uh, are you going to teach uh, like uh, ETL jobs and uh, ETL pipeline creation? ETL pipeline means? Uh, like, uh, I don't have much knowledge about that, but uh, I had like a data engineers do perform ETL jobs. They no, create, they may be uh, work with the ETL. They are adopt with the data engineering, right? They are going to move into ETL, from ETL to data engineering. Like that, it's a ETL is a previous, now ELT. ELT is our data engineering platform. Once the data is received, how we are going to play all your operations with different, different file formats, like WASC, Avro, Pocket, and uh, uh, JSON, different, different files is available. Each file have different size of the blocks is stored. How the block is going to be read, how uh, the mapper has to be created and task has to be created. Um, that all we are going to discuss. And while sync the data, how the split is working uh, with the different, different file formats, uh, with the file sizes. For example, if I have 500 MB of data, while I'm compressing with the different file format, how much size it's capable. While I'm going to read the data, how much reducer is going to be run, mapper is going to be run, task information, partition information, all we are going to see in practical. Okay, there is a plan. Everything yeah, we have okay. to go with is practical manner, then only you will get some clarity what's going on in the back end. Am I right? Yeah. In standalone, you cannot do more than that. It's a simple operation you can do. You cannot go and learn more than that. Like a yarn deployment, how based on the resource and course, you are going to deploy it, right? So based on that configuration has to be modified in the back end, you are going to see that. So queues based is going to be deployed when you are going to run your job the size of the cluster, what you mentioned, how it's going to be react in Spark UA basis. Everything we are going to see in real time. Okay? Okay. Will the, uh, like, uh, will the column mapping and table mapping all the covered as part of this course? Column mapping means? Like uh, when we migrate data from source to target tables, uh, source database to target database. While Need inserting the data, the that I will rate. show you. Mostly while this, this is the column mapping where it's required, while write the data, read the data, at the time only it may be required, we will guide, we'll guide you how we can do that. So metadata references, before inject the data, how we can fetch that information and make the sequence. Everything we are going to discuss. Okay? Okay. So don't worry. Also transformation of the data as well? Transformations? Transformation of the data as well. Yeah, that all is a basic, right? That all we must cover it. Okay. So each transformation, how it is reacted. <clears throat> so that we'll go in detail. Okay. 
even functions also the basic functions you have to create in spark your own udf functions and all something is available everything we are going to discuss in detail <laughs> that's the reason we just suggested to go with minimum primitives okay otherwise we yes, can sir. cover in the timeline right but it's not like that how many yeah. questions you raised we are trying to answer you and we must uh, explain that one even without, uh, if we don't know that question, we will search and we'll update you, don't worry. As a practice, uh, we will get some learning from you, that's it. Okay? Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> because nobody's an expert, everybody is an equal. So yeah, based true. on the experience, they may be going to encounter that institution before they can answer it. That's the difference. Okay, any other question? Yeah, yeah I have one question. Um, yeah, please. Uh, hi, I'm Harisha. Yeah. Um, is this like a Linux system where you'll be teaching and like we should have operating system of Linux? Oh, this is has a kind of Linux platform only, but uh, you, we can suggest it. Sorry, sorry. We can go with Windows itself because we are going to deploy everything as a Docker machine, right? Docker okay. is going to be playing the back end with the Linux platform. We have designed already. We will give you these images. You have to deploy in your local and you can use it. Here you can okay. see almost 18 containers running. Based on your configuration sizes, it's going to be expand. So I'm like okay. this, this Jupiter. I'm like this. This editor will work with Hive directly, is it? Like in Windows? Yeah, exactly. Okay. This is actually Windows environment only. You can see this one. Awesome. I'm using Windows only. This is okay. okay. Here I just deployed as a based on the Docker. It's going to be run in the background. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So platform related, we can adopt with our Docker image container, or even VM also will be going to play as a separate images, so as a Linux based images one. So don't worry about it. We are trying to match you with the reality. That's our motive. So if you are going to reach the reality practice, you can easily adopt what's going on. And you can learn more to compare with all of this. And uh, while you are going to enter with a real time platform, these are you must going to be face it. How uh, that resources allocated each job, how the job allocations you are going to encounter in the back end, what kind of issues you're going to face it, how you're going to override it. All this you are going to do that as a data engineering by your own. Okay, so these are we will practice it and we'll give you as inputs. Got it? Any other question? Hello, hello sir. Uh, this is Basha. Mm. Sir, in uh, in our day to day activities as a data engineer, uh, how much uh, weightage? I mean, how much weightage will be like for SQL, uh, for Python, and intra level knowledge when it comes to uh, let's say cores and everything? Mm, it's not based on the weightage. How many years of experience you have? I have uh, five years of experience. Okay, it's, I'm not to uh, think about the experience. Sorry to ask you. As a data engineer, how you're going to adapt with that scenario? That's it first. Mm. Because all the SQL queries or Python query or PySpark query, everything is available mm. from outside. You just Google it, you'll get some idea, right? Immediately you can adapt with that. So you don't want to memorize anything. Via practice and experience, you, can, you must learn it. Am I right? Yeah. But you must know how you are going to use that particular queries or codes in your environment. That's exposure and knowledge you must need it. Right. Apart from basics, all of the complex you must get from some Google operations only. Basic syntax only, you must learn it. So you don't think about how much the weightage about SQL, how much the weightage about uh, Linux commands and all. Not like that. Okay. You know the scenario you can encounter and resolve it. That's enough. You are, you are a data engineer. Yeah. Via experience only, you can learn everything. Right. That practices make it perfect. That's it. That's it for you. Even 13 years or 14 years experience, they are placed as a data engineer, but they are just a non-tech. It was happened previous batches. Okay, so you are not experienced in any programming before, but while you are doing the practice, right, you can adopt with the situation and you can do it your own. So okay. this is happening. Almost 14 years of experience, she has placed as a data engineer, but before that, she doesn't do any practice with the programming. It must happen 100%, I'm surely saying. So based on their inputs and she is continuously doing some questions, do some practice there. 
that is the improvement she has got the offer she got two offer actually so it's up to your interest and your inputs if you don't know the question you don't know that uh, particular topic or any particular uh, information you can raise it to, to us first we will try to help you but we need that kind of uh, motivation from you that interest okay that's yes, sir. our yes. expectation that's yeah it. So when it comes to Azure, uh, so you are talking about Azure Data Lake. Huh? Mm. Data Lake Gen 1, Gen 2, as well okay. as some topics is available, right? Yeah, the yeah. inside, that all we are going to cover. Okay. okay. So as you're right, so Cosmos DB SQL database, SD inside virtual machine and data like Gen 1, Gen 2, block storage, event have high event hub. These are the kind of streaming analytics that all we are going to cover it here. And also in real time projects, uh, do we see mix of uh, these technologies or? Uh, uh, yeah, one or uh, two services we are going to come in together and we'll see some examples too. We cannot use everything, right? Yeah. yeah. So some scenario we have to adopt with one or two services. We are going to come in together and we'll show you as a uh, project. Okay. It. it would be like the best of everything they will take and make yeah, it. Yeah, each services we are going to separately discuss. What's yeah. happening the services, how we are going to communicate via programmatically. That's we are going to cover it. After that, while we are going with some sample project, we are going to use few of the services and we are going to adapt it. Example, HSD Insight is available, Cosmos TV, IoT or VWT is available. We are going to sync together. Our block storage, also data like Gen 1, Gen 2, and SD Insight or Cosmos TV, something we are going to combine together and we'll show you some inputs. As well as Snowflake. Mostly we are going to work with Snowflake. We have to adapt with any cloud operation. So some yeah. combination we are going to design and derive to it. So it's okay. not a single, okay? It's a combination mostly. Even our classes, yeah. projects, right? The projects also will go with, first we will cover high project. From the high project output, you are going to use as a Spark project. Such combination pipeline we have created. Then only you get some idea. What's Hive, what is Hive is doing? Based on the Hive, what is Spark is doing? Such kind of information you will get more about it. Right? That's okay. all we are going to discuss in detail. Got it. Any other question? Uh, yes. Uh, will you cover uh, like uh, Databricks, Data Factory, and Synapse as part of Azure? Synapse is not covered here. And uh, we will give you some inputs about Data Factory because Data Factory is a kind of ETL platform. In data engineering related, we will cover, cover the basics of the uh, data factory. Hmm. What is what you asked? Another one? Databricks and Synapse. Databricks is a separate session, right? So Databricks, we will give you whole record. What was uh, what we have done before? We have created a separate classes for Databricks. Entirely, we will be discuss only about Databricks. After it's going to be adopted with Azure, we will not be go in depth with that because Databricks is not a small topic. It's like a separate snowflake we have to discuss entirely about this. So it's not a single service. In the back end, you have must create the cluster and you want to deploy it. And there you want to discuss about automation cluster and static cluster designs. A lot of things is available. So we cannot add, add it here. But before it was a separate database topics we have designed. Before we adopt with Azure. Nowadays, who are working with Azure, they may be going to work with the database, like that only. So that we just keep, but old recording is available. We are going to add it to you for your references. You can practice with that. Okay. If it is a single topic, one or two hour session is covered, then it's easy. But it's an entire topic. We cannot adopt it with our timeline. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I joined just now. Can you please uh, go through the uh, fast quick uh, what you are covering in the whole training? This is. This is the course over you. So Hadab, Hive, Pyrespark, Kafka, Docker, Cassandra, Airflow. Airflow completely we are going to discuss with the bigger platform integration like Spark, Hive operators, something like sensors related, that all we are going to cover. And the database such as Snowflake. These are all the major services we are going to discuss. So each of them yeah, in detail manner, I just give you as an input, you just go through with the syllabus. This syllabus is available in our form. Just to click on this hyperlink, that's it. The service will be visible to you. Okay. And one more thing, the yeah, any question?
yes sir uh, how much python knowledge required for this course like uh... zero we will give you the python knowledge right we will be cover the python basics and then we are going to start with actual classes so we will yeah, like, take care of the python don't worry yeah like uh, we need advanced of uh, python or else uh, basic knowledge is fine for this course basic knowledge is more enough because you are going to practice it right then only you will be going to adapt with your next level am i right yeah. Yes, yes. So basic level we will be going to give you because everyone is an equal page. Then only we can go for the next level. Yeah. Correct. So yes, we will be think because somebody will not have confidence with Python programming. We cannot go for the next level because if I'm going to make any command or syntax, they may be confused. So we will be cover that first, and then we are going to start with a particular topic. So okay. it's it's a middle only we're going to start. Not immediately during our session after had a five and all is covered. Whenever we are going to start the programming basic topic, or before we are going to cover Python, mm -hmm. and then we are going to start. Yeah. Okay. I, um, okay. This is Manju. I have a couple of yeah. questions. Um, yeah, please. So first is um, so these will be live sessions, right? So in case for some reason I could not attend one particular session, will it be covered later or it will be recorded? Yeah, separate videos is available for your references later. You can. Refer it. If you have any doubt, you can ask me in one to one. Okay. But and, we um, will allow you one or two sessions as an excuse, and we are requesting to join all the classes. Okay. okay. And <laughs> what will be the okay? Mm. Got. It. And what will be the uh, tentative timeline? And uh, is it like every week or is it every day? Or it's a weekend. 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 That's one. Every weekend. Okay. Weekend. Okay. Six thirty to eight thirty p.m. So Saturday and Sunday, both times we are going to cover it. And this is the approximate time I just provide based on your course selection site. It's just going to be modified as well as the payment. I forgot to inform you. The payment is not like you want to pay the first installment immediately. We will give you one month trial session with the thousand rupees payment. Example, you must know how the session is going on. The quality as well as your understanding is matter, right? So we will give you one month trial session with the thousand rupees. That thousand rupees also hundred percent refundable. Once the session is over, you cannot interest, you know, you will not be interested with us. You want to go out, we will give you that thousand rupees as a refund to you. Okay. okay. It's a kind of your confidence. With your confidence, you are reaching to us, then only we can grow up you. That's the reason. So after one month, you have to pay first installment of your course selections. Okay. This is the way. Because okay. without confidence, we don't want to ask you any cost. Uh, that's not a correct manner as well. We need a quality and we have to prove our stuff to you. Then only we can ask the payment and all. So one mm -hmm. month we will give you as a trial batch. You can join the session. You can understand what's going on live session. Everything you can notice. After one month, if you are interested, you can continue with us. Or if you want to uh, go, we will give you a proper Google, golden handshake with you. And your payment, that thousand rupees also refund to you. Don't worry. Because you must know how the session is going on. That reality you want to adopt the track. Am I right? So we will give you right. that timeline. So okay. after one month, you are not interested. We will not be forcing you. It's up to your wish. But we and will try to do our stuff. And what is the total course fee? It's from depends on your course selections. If you are going to choose only hundred dollars, sixteen thousand. Everything will be going to come in. It's almost a thirty thousand. A big data platform, AWS, Azure, Snowflake. Everything you're going to cover, it's a 30,000. Okay, it's start from 16 after. It's up to your wish. In case I started with Big Data Plus Docker and then I like the session and I want to do one of the uh, cloud platforms. So can I can I just move, move in after that and then pay the extra? Uh, it uh, depends the on that nomination. We know our batch, right? The maximum number of people will be allocated. We cannot okay. add it. Because if it is crossed to more than the number of people, what it will happen? We cannot provide the proper quality. We can try and trace them separate, right? <laughs> because we will be providing some assignments. We have keep on tracking with them. So that is also matter. So we have limited seats is available. Once it is filled, we can fill it. We can trace it. So based on the nomination only, we can get it. Almost we will be getting some nomination. That nomination, how many people interested, we will be add with our session and we can freeze the batch. Once the particular time is over, then we cannot add anybody into the particular batch. Mm -hmm. This is the way we are going to. Because 
In the middle, if we are going to add or we are going to do some changes with our batch member, it may be raising some confusions. So we are going to freeze the batch once a particular time, and then we will not be add anybody. So it's up to that. Okay. Um, uh, one can we question. customize the last option? One more. Like one, a full stack one. data engineer. Uh, if I don't want Azure and uh, I want REST Tower. Which one? Is it okay like that? See, Come again? Uh, in, the, in, full, in full stack data engineer, we have five stack, right? Big mm. data, Docker, AWS, Azure, mm. and Snowflake. Mm. Yeah. So if I don't want Azure and uh, I want REST for, REST for the technologies. REST for only you need except Azure. Yeah. Mm, okay, then we will be discussing and let you know that. Because this is the okay. plan we have designed. Somebody will go with Azure Data Engineer or AWS Data Engineer. But you will be expert for AWS Azure, Snowflake only, then we will be discuss that. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, okay. Mm. Thank you. Also, Thank we will give you some more and more inputs. Uh, today, is a, this is a trending technology. In future, some new trending technology is going to be introduced and you cannot learn it at the time. From the beginning, right? So, as an old student, at the time, example, you no know, GCP, we are going to plan it to add in the future classes. At the time, you want to learn only the GCP related topic, we will give you some basic amount to uh, get that information about the GCP. So, this is also all to student concession we will be going to offer you. I forgot to tell Can you I that. I was going to ask about GCP. Um, mm. So because you already told, I was going to ask how mm. GCP is there an option to do GCP? Um, now we will not be included because the timeline is not adapted with that. And this mm -hmm. is mostly trending. GCP is coming as a recent trending technology. I am also working in a GCP nowadays. I am working in two platforms, two cloud platforms. One of them is a GCP. So we know what's going on trend right now. Based on that, we are going to change the syllabus. That is the reason we just keep the Databricks and add a Snowflake here. Okay. So whenever the trending is changed, based on that, we are going to add it as a new syllabus here, and based on that, we are going to work together. Thank you. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Not only this is the end, right? So new technology will be introduced. New topic has to be introduced in data engineering platform. At the time, you are an old student. You want to learn that particular tool. You don't want to wait again. You can join our session. We can go with that. Uh, good uh, learning. Sir, so, can I know the course fees for uh, only Python? I mean, PySpark with uh, AWS. PySpark with the AWS. This is while the session is going on, right? Based on the nomination only, we can suggest how okay. many people will be filled, how many is open is free. Based on only, we can give you. Yeah, yeah. like uh, the course fees. Yeah, course fees, it's a spreadable, right? We have to calculate and we'll give you some advice. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's what yeah. I say. First, we'll give you the based on the priority, based on the nomination form who was filled it before. That we'll be taking, uh, uh, find out, and we'll be informed them of the priority basis. And then only we can add. This is the way we are going to do it. So, airflow yeah. is we are going to be covered for all tracks, right? Hmm? Airflow. Hmm. We are going to be covered for all tracks, right? Like where it is the uh, AWS or Azure or all the topics. We are, covering... we are going to cover a full stack entirely. This is the plan. If you are going to choose no, AWS, I, I, yeah. Um, I'm asking, suppose uh, if I choose for AWS data engineer. Hmm. So, as part of that one, we are going to be covered with Airflow also, right? Scheduling purpose. Yeah, yeah. Scheduling is a part of big data platform, right? So, first, a big data okay. platform entirely will be covered. Then the session is over for big data engineers. And then AWS. AWS is over, then Azure. Because this is a pipeline agenda. It's full stack, okay. all the topics has to be covered. Am I right? Okay, we are going to be we are going to be covered with the Boto 3 also, right? In AWS. Yeah, AWS Boto 3 is a base, right? Based on that only API calls, you can do that. Exactly. Yeah, that we will be doing that and we'll show you some examples later. Sure, sure, sure. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. I have one more question. Uh, like uh yeah. Like if, if I choose AWS data engineer, uh, will it uh, be sufficient to clear big data specialty certificate, like AWS big data specialty certificate? We will not be think about certification. We are think about only a data engineer. As a data engineer, what are the services you need? That's it. If you go with the certification, you have to learn different things, right? Which is not relevant to that particular data engineering. It will go more than that as well. 
as a cloud data engineer not like this you will be covered it uh, as an interview basis while you go for the interview what kind of questions they may be asked uh, from the data engineering perspective in aws what are the services they may be expect from you such things based only we have designed this package this is mostly close to interview crack related topics got it yeah, so what is it. the duration for full stack course so five months minimum it will reach because how, many hours? Hmm? how many hours five months minimum i'm saying uh, per month 20 100 hours it will reach because it's a five months, right? So you can split for each month how much time. Minimum I'm saying five months. Three, three and a half months to five months, it will go beyond that. Okay, so 60 to 90 hours, I just provide approximate timing. It will go beyond that as well. This is for Hadoop and AWS basis and full stack up to 90 hours approximate. It will go more than that as well. Because each of the topic we are going to discuss is practical, right? So within a timeline, it may be crossed more than that. That I'm sure. Got it? Got it, sir. Any other question? Hi, hi this is Arif. Yeah, Arif. Uh, I'm a ETL developer for the past five to six years. Hmm. So mostly I'm back in only. So, oh, yeah, right. uh, so in this course we have map uh, big data and do Python also. That is related programming uh, in the map. Map is the programming related and Python is also programming related. Can it suitable for this course or better? Mostly the course will go into whatever I saw in the topics on things. So mostly it's a backend only. So database mm -hmm. related only most of the data engine related only. But even though uh, I'm the poor in the programming. So maybe, uh, maybe I struggle in the programming level or uh, what in the course? Yeah, as a ETL developer already informed, right? So you have some e uh, knowledge before with the ETL modeling, data modeling and all, yes. how data is working. Easily yes. you can adapt with the data engineering, I'm sure. So it's not big deal to you. Those who are come from apart from other platform, right? They may be get some uh, struggle. That is, we are trying to avoid it. So mostly, that, mostly I work in the relational databases only. Mm, so that's very are, easy to you. Easily you can adapt it. Okay, thank you. Be, because it's a SQL platform, right? Data engineering also is a base with the SQL and some yes. programmatic access related. That's actually, it. Actually, I'm trying to learn Snowflake. So it's a doctor is coming in that course. That's why I, I joined this course. So hmm. maybe it's suitable big data also. It's suitable for me. Maybe in future, it's, uh, some points are coming the big data also. So I have to learn that thing also. So that's yeah. why I joined. So mostly this course is mostly uh, 60, 40, 60, 70 percent so going to back end only. It means uh, database related only, not programming related. I'm guessing. No, Spark is a kind of program integrations. Kafka is a kind of program integrations. Airflow is a completely program related. So we cannot avoid it, right? So, so remaining, rename Cassandra and uh, Snowflake hmm. uh, and AWS in the blue ETL, that is only the databases. No, uh, here also some of the two services are available only via API calls. How we are going to interact with the kernel source? You cannot do that, right? Via program only you can do that. Am I right? Uh, yes. So it's we cannot assure only with the uh, database later. It's a program combinations. Okay, as a data engineer, you must have some knowledge with SQL as well as programming. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, example, Snowflake, as you know, something is relevant to data. I'm okay with that. But what about other tools? Kafka, Spice Park, some uh, Airflow. That that's, why, that's, why, yeah. that's, why, that's why I'm asking that all the programming mm -hmm. asks, So, can yes. I suitable for this course or not? That's why I'm asking. <laughs> no, you can easily adapt with that because already you have experience, right? So, whenever the programming knowledge, you just want to know what's going on. How you are going to adapt with your already existing tools? That's it. That we can easily adapt. That is the reason I'm clearly said you are a ETW, you can easily adapt with the data engineering. Okay, fine, thank you. Somebody has struggles, somebody don't have some clear thought how I'm going to do that, that particular proper environment, they don't have it. The we will give you and we will keep on monitoring with them. Right? So definitely it will help to raise their knowledge. That's it.
Okay. Any other question, guys? Okay, so mostly we have discussed today what we are going to cover, what kind of topics, and of course, the syllabus, everything we just discussed, and a trial session also. Tomorrow is the first day session that will be a free for everyone. You don't want to pay. Tomorrow session, you can just join the same time how the session is going on. You can attend it. After that, if you are interested, you can just pay 1000 rupees and join for one month live trial session. That is allowed only for live session classes. You will not provide any recording. Try to attend all the classes without paying. Overall is interested. Because you must know what this, how, uh, what's going on in our classes, how the quality is there. Everything you want to keep on monitor, then you satisfy, you can join with our session as well. We will not be forcing you. It's up to your wish. But you must know what's going on and how the session is interacted. That basic knowledge you must require. So we will give you and we will prove our stuff, then we will go forward. So, uh, sorry, I have one question. Uh, what will be covered then in one month? For example, if you want to understand how. Uh, will be covered after that, high basics will may be going on. This is two things that are going on, right? So, there you may get some idea what's going on, how the session is look like. Right? Okay. We will not be covered entirely within a one month. This is actual session. How this actual session is going on, how others are going to be adopted with that. What is your role? You have some idea. Correct? Yep. That's the reason we'll give you such like. Any other question? After payment done, we can get the video uh, records. Of yeah. Sorry? Uh, after payment done, so can we get the, our record videos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, if you are in, in middle, you are interested within a one month, you want to join the session, you can pay the first installment. And you can get the recording, daily recording, daily classes going on, right? It's completely recorded only. We will give you access as well as the environment access, everything to you. You have to practice from your end as well. Those who don't have a confidence, they have to attend the session. Once they get the confidence, they will be going to adopt with us. That's it. Okay. You must enter to us with the confidence. Base. That only will help you to, uh, to move you into the next level. Actually. Okay. I'm I have one question, sorry, to ask once again. Mm -hmm. Probably I, I know a little bit basics of um, like the small Hadoop, um, not Hive, but mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't have any knowledge on this uh, Dockers. So you will be covering the Dockers initially or like it will be completely on like, I would say Putty, I'm like, we use Linux. No, we will give you some, already we have created the tunnel. First, you must concentrate that tools, topics related, Hadoop, Hive, uh, how it is working. The installation part, we will help you. Don't worry about it. Okay. Once the session, that particular container is running in the back end, you want to practice with all your commands and all. While we are going to start with the Docker topics, we will be going to discuss what's going on in the back end. That information we will give you. Okay. So I'm saying After that, first month you are saying the uh, we will be will be I'm like doing the test on the Docker or or will be having a common environment. Direct session, direct Hadoop session. How Hadoop work and what are the topics is available? The demons is running the backend. What are the uh, information you can get from the Hadoop nature that we are going to discover, and the environment practice, MapReduce job, how it is working. That all we are going to discuss. After that, I I basic under table creation, some different table creation. What's happening in the backend? The properties, how it is going to be react. We are going to monitor it. Okay. Okay. So there you, if you have already Hadoop knowledge, right? You may be judge your knowledge with us. So whether we have the proper capable or not, like that, you can do that. And that's not a big deal. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Just I'm informing nice. you. So because you need to be confident. That's our, our expectation as well. Okay. So while we are going to okay. work with the Docker, we'll give you some images based on the images we are going to play with that and they work with uh, some images based. And then Cassandra, right? This is separate images available. You are going to adopt that without this cluster. So this is the entire cluster we have designed. Cassandra is not included here. You want to download this Cassandra cluster and you want to practice with your Docker commands. And that is, we are going to give you as input. The concept we are going to give you as additional input. Because you must know that Docker commands, right? How you are going to interact with the Docker commands? That expression you must know it. So the Cassandra will not be part of your container that our VM images. You have to add it separate. 
Okay, that we will guide you. Don't worry. Got it? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Any other question? Okay, so this is a sample of the node is working. Some scenario, some screenshot I just give you for references. So you just go through with Celepress and that our topics, and I just post this video into our YouTube channel as well. You just refer it again. Okay, any question we can discuss, or tomorrow we will directly see actual session. Any question? Okay, fine. So we'll just think about it and tomorrow same time you can join with the same meeting link and uh, you can attend the session and if you're satisfied, you can communicate with us. Just reach us in private. The same WhatsApp number is available. You can text us and we will continue. Okay. It's a first come, first place as well. Those who are interested, we will create a separate WhatsApp group, right? There we will add it to the as well. Any question, guys? No, 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 sir. No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So tomorrow, same time, you can connect and we'll discuss about it much. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm dropping now. Thank you all.